If Jacis is going to leave that far side open and ban out this Lilia, I think they know that, okay, Swirl is maybe one of the main win conditions. The first win condition before 1-1 one -one gets her power spike and starts ripping the rest of Team Evil up. But this huh? begs the question that maybe you want to give Farsa over to the side of Revival because you do have that Valentina. But then, then again, you give Valentina options. Best be sure that Melon's going to be taking those options up. Give no. them a chance to be able to set up different types of plays in different, different kinds of scenarios. No, here's the thing. I am relatively con uh, surprised, I would say, not say confused, but surprised kicking. at the fact that Revival is uh, immediately assuming and, of course, thinking of the fact that Evil may actually flex this Paquito into the EXP lane instead. And I totally respect that. They immediately ban out the Karina. While the Dairov is also flexible in going to the EXP lane or the jungle, the the Dairov ban is really more of a counter for Esmeralda, and definitely they do not want to see that happening in this game. Well, Evil, they have responded with a faster pick, so great high ground coming from the side of Evil. In fact, their team has, is looking pretty sturdy so far. Yeah, this, this is really unorthodox by the side of Evil, and I'm loving it for the side of Evil. You know, you have uh, Valentina already, and Farsa is picked as well. Um, you know, I was kind of considering that Farsa might be a problem if it's picked by Revival. They're going to complete their last two picks with the Barats and the Sicilian. So late game insurance, definitely there is there. 1-1 um, one, one as well as the Esmeralda together with your Barats and Sicilian. All late game yeah. carries. Yeah. And n now, here's the thing. I really want to focus on this very fact. Is that, uh, is that Evil have picked out heroes. Every single one of them excels in the early game. They picked up two mages in this <laughs> game solely. And one, one of the main, main reasons is the fact that they want magical damage. Magical damage in the early stages of the game is as phenomenally painful. And you need to find ways to make full use of it. And of course, get yourself out of the way. The only other heroes that could fit into the EXP role gonna have to be Valentina as this Farsa gonna have to be the one roaming around and make things work around the map. Well, I love both sides of the draft. It's pretty much even at this point. Revival has a very thick draft, but it excels in the later stage of the game. And like you said, Abstract, in early stages of the game, Evil is gonna be excelling in those in those uh, timings. So it's yet Man, to be I seen love these him. guys. Yeah. <laughs> They're super excited for their fans, and I'm sure you guys are at home as we are moving on to game number one of the last match of today between Team Revival versus Team Evil. Right, who is gonna get one step closer, Evil or Revival? These two teams have evolved throughout the regular Five season, and this time, is it gonna the be the final game. evolution that Smash brings them. them across to fight against Slate tomorrow in the best of five? Welcome to this is going to be a very, very detailed, structured, disciplined play coming up from both teams right here. But expect a lot of early game engages. We talked about that in their keys to victory. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see it after the buffs have been uh, taken down. But the fact that LY4 is picking up the Barats, he's actually bracing himself. Because he knows that Powerful is going to invade on his jungle. He does have the high and dry. So what that means is that if he's alone, he's going to be able to take him out easily. 8% extra damage. He's going to be shredding and melting him down, especially once he gets level 4. Alright, this, this um, mid lane and goal lane is pretty much standard, but I want to ask you about JS against Ryan. This is a very peculiar lane for, for EVO. Yeah. Um, JS against Ryan, I mean, JS really pops off only in the later stage of the game, but if hold on a second right here, QDX love. A little bit out, but Carrot misses that hook by a little bit, but Let's go back to the EXP lane matchup. This is not a conventional EXP lane one-on-one -on -one that we're used to seeing. We have Valentina over here, which is able to soak up a lot of EXP. I mean, based on her passive, as well as uh, going out for a lot of magical defense, uh, magical attack, and magical splash damage that Esmeralda might not be able to comprehend. Yep, I like I like the concept of the Valentina against. Um so, uh, Ryan in this uh, EXP lane because you know the passive of Valentina allows you to yeah. kind of match it up right even if you're under level so this could potentially be a losing lane but it is fine for them right evil they have this preparation in hand and if you take a look they will be setting up to try something at the top the turtle is going to spawn up LY4 checking on the brushes knowing that powerful is there it kind of looks as if uh, evil is going to be in a better position to take this one out 
Yep, they have to be very careful about LY4. Uh, QDX11 Sword will be around the corner as well. Can they actually make this contest? Powerful jumps in, he feels it! Ooh. My goodness! Evo starts it! They're gonna try and chase for the kill as well. LY4 with the oh. Blast! It is another kill! Ryan goes down! It's two kills for Evo! And that's how they're gonna start the game right here. A huge gain! 1,005 in gold for them, and they steal the buff as well. I was confused just for a little bit because I thought like, okay, QDX Love still level 3, does not have her ultimate, but JS Love, all, uh, J Jaces is already level 5 in this sense. Just stealing that uh, ultimate from Lolita, the Numenon Blast, rever Uno Reverse over onto the side of Revival. They are not able to take this one. Two kills over to the side of Evil. Yep, not the start that Revival was looking for. They are now with a one level deficit for their support as well and the Roma. So this is going to be quite tough for them to, you know, mount a defense and make sure they can win and make sure that they have the proper wave management as well. Mm -hmm. And this Farsa was just spectacular. I mean, see the way that she uses the Feather Air Strike just try to zone away. You don't have to take any kills. You just have to bring them out of the objectives and play to your strengths because the burst damage coming out from the Feather Air Strike is able to sort of like seep you down and cause you to run away in terror, run away in fear. And then Carrot comes in with Powerful as well. Oh, the powerful. damage coming out from this Paquito is already starting to show. Yep, so far I think I like the, the early draft, right? This, this early synergy from Evil. But my question is, as we head towards the mid and late game, uh, there will be options for the Esmeralda to really jump into the back and right? cause a lot of problems. But with that, we are going to be talking about a problem for JS. But it looks like it's not too big of an issue for him. Yeah, Jesus is just gapping Ryan as much as he can. It's just so, so one-sided oh, in this match. But hold on a second. Oh, oh my god, he's gonna jump in. It is a two-man stun here. Carrot is not looking good. He is gonna be under the tower. Oh. He turns it around. Coconut gets punished as well. Well done to Revival. They are gonna try and even things out at this point. The reverse coming in. The reverse coming in from Peace, they were expecting that. They know that Carrot was going to flicker in and cause that bloody hunt. And then, look at what happened. QDX Love just Ooh, took the bite for them. But on the top, Powerful took the kill, takes the kill off of Peace. Yep, with that, they will get the turtle started, but uh, Powerful is around the corner as well. Can they get the steal though? And oh no, it doesn't ha happen for them as LY4 is going to secure it for his team. So Revival managing to even things again. They are always trailing, but somehow they make it up. Well, I mean, he was not that far ahead oh, oh, Ryan. Time, but Ryan he tries is, to dash a little bit in. Yep, he is going to be in a tough spot, but I, I think he's going to make it out fine. They will commit that uh, Feather Airstrike, but so far it looks like uh, Revival doing okay. They're placing a lot of emphasis on trying to farm up. I know they're trying to avoid a lot of team fights. They're trying to play a reactive approach, especially in early stages of this game. I mean, it's still five minutes into this, this match, but Evil and Revival still neck and neck so far. Coconut, though, is one kill, but he's getting really harassed in the lane so far, but on the top side, though. Yep, it is going to be a 2v1 situation. Oh! They get the kill! Powerful leading it. They, they will try a cross-map play here, and Coconut is the first to fall. So it's a 1v1 trade across the map, but Karras falling as well. Can they save him? Can Melon do it? No, he will not. Now Y4 will get a double kill in this, and they're going to trade turrets as well as kills, but I think it's looking good for Revival. It is good looking good for Revival. I mean, taking out one turret for the price of two heroes, as well as all of that. I mean, that was such a good play coming in from Revival, putting them up on top again. But let's take a look at the items real quick. Paquita already built up the Hunter Strike. It looks like he's going to build up a Malefic Roar in that process, just going full damage. He doesn't care what kind of defense they need because he's playing it early game. He wants to end this fast. He wants, he's tired. He wants to go home. Yep, I mean, Evil have one of the fastest game times across any team in the league. And I'm pretty sure I agree with you when, they, when you say they want to end this fast. Yeah, I mean, Revival's already done much better than SMG did in the previous game against Evil. I mean, they gave, they took four kills over to the side of Evil, which was pretty much unprecedented in a game against SMG as well. Two perfect games in a row for the side of Evil. This puts them in a very comfortable and confident position. Yep, it is going to be everyone standing on their knife's edge as LY4 steps in a bit too forward. But he is going to be fine at this point as JS is going to try and make something work. Uh, the turtle has already been started powerful around the corner. They want to do this turtle down. Get it over to their side as Jace is very comfortable here. Oh, but, but they do get a good catch! And Ryan gets taken down. Can they do more though? Powerful, he's a bit low. Oh! oh, what a nice start. Powerful steals it as well. Double kill for them. Can they make it work? Another kill. All members of Revival are dead. It is a wipeout. So early in this game, seven minutes and Revival suddenly 
outbreak from Evo and that might cost them a couple of turrets. Fast fingers from Evo and Powerful already up. Six kills, no deaths. This guy is a man on a mission. He's out for blood. He wants, he's tasted blood and he's on the hunt. He wants more. He wants to take the rest of Revival down. This man is the epitome of Evo. Yup, and Carrot. Carrot's very careful. He, he wants to stand here and try a monstrous hook on anyone on Revival. Oh man. We have to slow things down a little bit right now because they've already breaking through on the first tier. Evil already cementing themselves as 4K gold lead. They have what it takes to take them in team fights. Revival needs to put weight and be patient. Don't take fights that you can't fight. Don't take fights that you can't win. That's right. Uh, Carrot, I think uh, his job is very simple. We know how a Franco operates. So his role right now is to be the eyes and the ears of Evo to make sure that they know where exactly every single member of Revival is at. But I want to commend Jaces. Every single time he takes an alternate, it's off of the Noom numbers. Oh, Carrot! Almost stealing off that orange buff, but what a play. Almost, but no cigar. Yep, close, but no cigar indeed as Jaces, Melon, and Carrot are going to set it up here. LY4, he knows that he wants to get hooked because the rest of the team is going to follow this up. Can they catch anyone out from the side of Revival? Evo very patient and they might mount the defense right now. It kind of looks like Melon not having any of the ultimates off of the enemy team just yet. He, need, he needs to wait for the right time, the right approach to find and seek out QDX's love from the human on blast and use it to their advantage. And Melon, so to speak, always having a very edge but at the ready. And Lord popping up in just a moment. Yeah, but powerful. He is spotted out by the team of Revival. Can they get the bait in? The carrot maybe stepping a bit too far, showing off. Uh, and it looks like they will get the Lord started, but I'm not sure how does Revival play into this? Ooh, it kind of looks like if Evil is pretty much that position, Revival is playing as a unit. Ooh, how's going to be all together? But it kind of looks like Powerful wants to fight this one. Melissa is already on his way down. Coconut wants to try to get that flank. Wants to get something started. Numa on blast. All right, here we go. It is going to be a first gun. Jason gets QDX love. A double kill for the team. And But they can do get a steal. Revival. Yes, they get the steal. But at what cost? Ryan is falling. Swan is down as well. Is it going to be a wipeout again? It is. My goodness. Evo came to play. And he came to play today. They take down the Lord at... But at what cost? They took down the lives of all five members of Revival. The Lord is going to buy them some time, but time is not in their hands. That's right, Evo. They smell blood and they are ready to get it done. Ooh, powerful. They used to be his knees. Every single time there's an engage, he gives up on the main objectives. Let's go for the kills. Let's cement ourselves. Let's buy ourselves some time. And right now, talking about buying, the economy for Evo is up. 6,000 gold lead. Yeah, going into a 7k gold lead really, really soon. And you know, you, I've seen this so many times in the regular season, but this time there's Jaces and Carrot. Both looking for a fishing company at this point. Oh, guns locked and loaded in the armory. They're just waiting for the right time to jump on any Oh, here we hook. go! Carrot gets it started. They do get the lockdown. Can they get the kill? They do kill off LY4. Where is the follow-up though? A reverse punishment as Ryan is running away. The oh. new blast comes. It is a three-man stun. They get it done as well. Is it going to be another wipeout again? It's so early in the game. Oh, that is not close to wipeout. There's a four-man, but Peace, he's unable to be able to defend this. The turret is going to go down for the side of evil. The third tier turret in the middle lane. And they are looking to end this. This eight seconds. Can they do this? Peace is just taken out. And they're focusing fire on the core. It's over. Game one as evil wipes them out and ends their game so quick. Hey, I mean, we talked about evil ending games fast, but this was too fast. Yeah, this was too fast. I mean, indeed, powerful. It was just way too powerful to handle. I mean, this guy just popping off, even though you have the whole team right there, he's high and dry, not really useful in that sense, he still made it work. He yeah. built full damage items, no tanks whatsoever. I'm really excited to know what you guys think about this entire yeah. matchup. I, I, I was thinking that it was kind of greedy from powerful. I was really questioning the fact, right? We have seen that a lot of teams play very patiently. They want to make sure that they have the growth before they really engage in team fights. But this is a 